Hey guys, Tony from Maryland and Delaware Herpin here. You'll probably notice I am not in my bedroom where I usually film my videos. Um, that's because we're heading to Delaware today. Yeah, so as you know, I have filmed all of the herps that I own. Well, not all of them. I did make a new purchase yesterday that you guys probably saw on uh, the Facebook page. However, she or he, we don't know yet. So it is not ready for a video debut yet, but that will be coming soon. So we're heading over to my brother-in-law's brother's house. We'll just say cousins. You know, they're family, cousins easier. So I'm heading over to my cousin's house uh, because their daughter has a reptile that we want to debut. I'm not even gonna say reptile because it says it in the um, title right here, you guys already know. It's a Kenyan sand boa and I don't own a Kenyan sand boa so I thought it would be cool to um, do a video about them and let her explain to you guys what she does and we'll talk about how they are and if they're good pets or not and um that's pretty much it so let's head over there all right guys so we're here at jeff alana and grace's house here's Hi. grace and this is her enclosure for her kenyan sand bella mm -hmm. as you can see she has a male and he's a baby so he doesn't need a very large enclosure and just like most Kenyan sand boas, you cannot see them in this cage because they like to hide out. Very simple. You've got a cool side, a warm side, some enrichment, and a water bowl. Very simple. These guys are very inexpensive to keep. And most people say they make great pets. I don't know if I will ever, ever own one, but who knows? I know a lot of people that do. But you can see he's burrowed down in that aspen bedding right now. So what we're going to probably do is get him out soon. But first, I just want to kind of ask Gracie a few questions. Mm -hmm. So, Grace, what made you want to get a Kenyan sand boa? Of all oh. the snakes out there, you know, with pythons, boas, king snakes, what was the Kenyan sand boa to you? The Kenyan sand boa was, once I watched this girl on YouTube, Taylor Nicole Dean, and she had one for herself, and that helped me get it for my fear of snakes, because of how little they were, and I okay. thought they were the most cutest looking things, they reminded me of worms, and they were pretty easy to take care of, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for me, I love animals. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being, this was your first snake ever, you were like, okay, this is something that works for me, and, and now you think after owning them for a while that you made the right choice? Yes, I do, I totally do. That's awesome. Do you feed him what he once a week or? I feed him once a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Okay. Well, you know what? I trust your judgment. So let's uh, take him out and then we'll see how he handles. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, guys. So as you can see earlier, we have our masks on because we take things seriously. But also, here is Boo, the male Kenyan sand boa that Gracie was describing earlier. And one thing is with them is they do have sexual dimorphism and the females get a lot bigger. Kind of similar with the hog nose snakes. You guys saw my video a couple weeks ago about Dennis, my Western hog nose. And he is full grown and he's only about maybe a foot and a half long, if that. And that's as big as he's gonna get because he's about two or three years old. But a female will get about three feet long, and that's kind of similar with Kenyan sand pillars. Now, Boo here, he's not full grown yet. When he gets full grown, uh, what do you think, Gracie? He'll get to about? Um, maybe like a foot and a half. Okay, so yeah. very similar species. Now, the cool thing about these guys, just like their name, they are in the boa family. So... But they are what's called an old world boa because they are from like Africa and boas from Africa and Asia are called old world boas and then the ones from the Americas are called new worlds. The Americas, we've got ones that are smaller like this, like rosy boas and rubber boas. And then when you get down into Central and South America, that's where you start getting your BCIs and your BCCs that can get up to like 12, 13 feet. But with these guys being old world, they don't... If you saw this, you would think it was more closely related to an earth snake or something like that rather than a boa, but they are in the boadai family, if I'm pronouncing that right. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, just like our other videos, 
even though Gracie already told us so much about it, we're going to kind of like factor in the three things we usually talk about, which are temperament, feeding, and cost. So as we were discussing earlier, temperament, these guys are great. Just like Gracie was saying, they're excellent for handling. They're not overly aggressive. Just like almost every snake in the world, they can bite. Obviously, they're not venomous. They're not even rear fanged venomous. Um, they are uh, very smooth in texture. Just like um, I was at the uh, Haverty Grace Reptile Expo yesterday and I was handling a juvenile um, Suriname red tail boa and it had that same texture, just like that smooth exotic texture right there. You know, so they're really cool to handle, but it's not like other boas where they're holding on to you because they're not arboreal or anything like that. These guys spend most of their time moving through the sand or the aspen bedding. It was like earlier when uh, Gracie was showing me the enclosure, the um, he was burrowed down into that aspen bedding. And that's one thing when you do own these guys, you're not going to see them out and about a lot. You're just going to see them most of the time, never, <laughs> because they are just going to bury themselves and that's really going to be it. So um, they're cool to take out and handle, but they're not really a display snake. So uh, for handleability, like I said, I think they're great. That's why they're such a great beginner snake. And that's why you're seeing them at most pet shops, reptile expos, and you're going to see a lot of breeders online. Now uh, for feeding, simple too. Frozen thawed, we always recommend that here on this channel. Um, do you do frozen thawed? Um, I usually do live only because he's mm -hmm. so young and that's what they had him and it was like harder for him to, it's harder for him to transfer him right now because yeah. the just won't do it and it's kind of a pain to have to like get a live one every week but we do plan on getting him on a frozen thawed. Oh yeah, a lot of times that's like more recommended for a lot of baby snakes mm -hmm. especially with uh, you know more exotic species you know they do better on a, a live diet and one thing about live when you're feeding baby snakes too, it's since unfortunately you're feeding them an infant mouse, there's no chance that the snake can get harmed. That's mainly why we recommend against uh, live feeding because mm -hmm. once they get to a bigger age and you're feeding them bigger prey, that bigger prey can hurt them. Mm -hmm. But whether you go live, frozen, thawed, these guys do kill by constriction because they're part of the boa family. That's the one thing all boas have in common. So... <clears throat> Again, they're not venomous or anything like that, but they are constrictors, but they pose absolutely no threat to humans, so they're not dangerous. So for handleability, temperament, feeding, very easy snake, once a week, that's all you have to worry about. And they are generally pretty good eaters. Mm -hmm. um, so that gets us to our uh, third category of cost. The snake itself is not expensive. You can generally find what, like we said, whether it's at a pet shop, uh, reptile breeder, reptile expo, you can find them for under a hundred dollars for certain morphs, just like anything else, the price can continuously grow, go up. Um, the enclosure we showed you earlier, I think, um, Gracie, what did you say? That's a 10 gallon. It's a 10 gallon for yeah. right now. 10 gallon. Yeah. For right now. And this is just a baby snake. And even when he gets bigger, you're not going to need something much bigger than that because they're not an exploring type of snake. The one thing that you do want to do is constantly keep a lot of substrate in there because they do love to burrow. So whether you're doing like an aspen bedding, um, eco earth, sand mixture, something like that, similar to what's in his cage, just something that they can go down into because they like to feel safe. That's what they do in the wild. They're in the... Uh, deserts of east africa and northern africa so they are going to be burrowed down either into the rock crevices or the sand and the whole thing is the reason we keep captive reptiles is because we want to try to simulate um their life in the wild you know but yeah that covers it for all three categories like i said you know for handleability um temperament feeding cost you can't go wrong with these guys Again, I don't know if I will ever own a Kenyan sand boa, but a lot of people do, and they have nothing but good things to say about them. So if you're looking to get into owning herps and you're like, hey, what should I get? If you want something that you're not going to see a lot, but it's good for handling and eats well, you can't go wrong with these guys. But 
that's all we got for here on uh, this channel today. I want to thank Gracie mm -hmm. and her parents that let us over here. And uh, we will be back next week and say thank you to Boo for being awesome today. And we'll see you next week with a different pet reptile.